Hello Kim Tu, time for the titration lab. In today's lab, you're going to need a graduated cylinder, both 10 mil and 50 mil, a plastic beaker for waste, a funnel, graduated cylinder for 250 mil. You're also going to need a burette. Burette is a long tube with graduations on the side and it has a stopcock at the bottom, a valve that allows you to open and close to allow water through. A burette clamp. Squeeze this in order to allow put the burette in. Ring stand, we've seen those. Um, KHP for the standardization. Potassium hydrogen phthalate. Phenolphthalene, the indicator, it's going to turn pink. About 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide, 0.08 molar hydrochloric acid, an unknown sample for each of you, and then vinegar, and of course, a balance. How do you have the burette? Well, the first thing you need to do is put the burette clamp on the ring stand. It's got a little wing nut here, so you screw that on and get it to a nice middle of the rod height. Then you're going to put the burette in. Burette goes with the, the point, the stopcock on the bottom. You squeeze this part, goes in, and just make sure that it's snug before you let go of it. And you're going to need a waste beaker. Now for standardizing the base, you're going to take some potassium, hydrogen potassium phthalate, that's that KHP. It's a solid, and put it into your 250 ml Erlenmeyer flask and add deionized water. It doesn't really matter how much, about 50 mils will do. Okay, once you get the water in there, swirl it a bit. Try to do your best to get it to all dissolve. Not all of it is going to dissolve unless you really, really, really are patient. However, if you need to, um, as you're titrating, it will gradually react with the sodium hydroxide. So you can ma just make sure that it's all dissolved by the time you finish the entire titration. You're also going to now add phenolphthalene to your flask. It might turn a little cloudy. It's an alcohol, so it'll mix, but then it'll clear up. Your burette should already have sodium hydroxide in it, so you're going to put a white paper down. Go ahead and swirl it to get it all mixed up and then you're going to gradually dispense the sodium hydroxide into the burette. Part that this video didn't show was the filling of the burette. I lost that footage, sorry. Now here's a close-up of the titration. This is going to take a while. It does take quite a, quite a bit of time, got a lot of patience. I knew that this first titration was going to require about 30 mils, so I was able to just open up the uh, burette and just let it go. Uh, I would suggest you not do that. It can get a little hairy if you um, miss the end point. Then you got to start all over again. So add a little bit. It'll turn pink once the sodium hydroxide hits, but then once you swirl it, it stops and it goes back to being clear. You're going to add your sodium hydroxide in, you know, big squirts for a while, and then later on you're going to add like a mill, a time, not necessarily a mill, a drop or two at a time until it becomes a very, 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 very faint pink. Like I said, this portion of the titration takes a while. It takes a lot of patience. Uh, real time, this probably took me about two or three minutes. I suspect most of you guys, given that it's your first time doing titration, will probably take closer to five minutes because you because of trying to be very, very cautious. Please be cautious. You don't want to start all over again just because you forgot or added way too much. You'll get a feel for how much is too much. As you can see here, if I add a little bit and it sticks around for a while, I know I'm closer and closer to the end point. Add some, swirl it, add some, swirl it. And towards the end, you'll be adding a drop or two and swirling it, it'll, it'll gradually go away. You'll see that in maybe about a minute. Keep adding it big squirts for a while, then smaller squirts, and then gradually down to a couple drops at a time. This does require a lot of patience. When I was in industry, I did this 
as one of the parts of my job. Not exactly the most exciting way to spend a eight hour day, but paid well, so it was all good. Just see how it's sticking around a little bit longer. So as you add a little bit, you swirl a little bit, a couple drops, sticks around a little while. So I'm slowing down, I'm adding, instead of adding like big, big squirts, I'm adding smaller and smaller amounts, a couple drops at a time. I don't want to miss the end point. I don't want to miss where it stays pink. You're waiting until it stays pink. You swirl it and it'll stay pink for about 30 seconds, in which case you know it's good to go. Keep adding small amounts. Keep adding small amounts. You're getting closer. I think I had like three or four drops there. Staying around a bit. So it's telling you it's closer to the end point. You can see as you add a small amount, it sticks around longer, you're closer to the end point. Okay, so this is just about done. I had like two, three drops. Sticks around. That's good. Okay, so you want it to be that faint, that faint of a color. So you'll do that for the potassium hydrogen phthalate. Then for all the other parts of the lab, you're going to do it with a liquid. Everything else is a liquid, though. You're going to do it once with a known amount, a known concentration, the 0 0.08. That's just a test run just to get your, get your feet wet. Then you're going to do it with an unknown. Each individual is going to do an unknown. And finally, you'll do it with vinegar. For the hydrochloric acid, you add 50 mils. You know, this is a little bit off site. Don't try to get exactly 50 mils. Just make sure you read the, gr the graduated cylinder correctly. Put it into the Erlenmeyer flask. And then to make sure all the solution gets out of the Erlenmeyer, the graduated cylinder, go ahead and rinse it with some more just deionized water. It doesn't really matter. The extra water is not going to impact the titration. You're just making sure that all everything gets out of there. Clean up your space, and then you're going to do the exact same thing. Add your phenolphthalein. Swirl it until it's clear. And then again, you're going to add the sodium hydroxide until it reaches that end point. Here we go. Put this on 4x speed because last time it took like two, three minutes to get through the titration. Figure we'll speed this up a bit. No, I didn't work this fast. Just want to get to the end point. See it sticking around, sticking around, sticking around. Still it took probably the better part of a minute here on 4x speed so you realize this does take quite a bit of time and it does take quite a bit of patience. Take your time. Slowly sneak up on the end point. Don't try to get it all done very, very quickly. There's absolutely no benefit in getting this done super fast. You'll get good at it. You'll be doing quite a few titrations. Like I said, you'll be doing a KHP one with a known 0.08 molar hydrochloric acid, one with an unknown for each of you, and then vinegar. So you'll be doing four or more titrations. That looks good. Mm, maybe. Oh, it went away. Add one more drop. That's better. You want to have it stick around for about 30 seconds. That one's good. And finally, just to show you how bad it is, I'm going to add two more drops. One, two. And it doesn't really take that much to really crazy turn this. Two drops, swirl, and it becomes an intense, intense pink. That's bad. But recognize also, I only add two extra drops. And that's the titration. You're going to do that over and over again. Last thing you need to do is clean up. Everything can be dumped down the sink and rinse really, really well for the next group to use. See you in the lab. Bye.